Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. Today I'm in our technical lab at our UK hub in Chatterton, Manchester. Okay, let's get started. In this video, we're looking at the Axis i8016LVE IP door intercom, its setup and configuration, and connection to the 2N indoor compact video handset. Right, let's have a quick look at the wiring. Both devices are PoE and connected to a WBOX PoE switch, which in, in turn is connected to a, a Wi-Fi router. The Wi-Fi connection is just so I can connect to the device. Each device has a, a built-in web server. So you need to connect to them with your laptop or your PC to do some initial programming. Once that's done, you don't particularly need Wi-Fi or the internet. But you might need it if you're adding an app later on or if you're going to be connecting to some remote management suite for the for the camera. Okay, with that all done, we can start with the software. You need two network scanners. You, you can use a generic network scanner to find the devices, but it might be easy to use the, uh, the manufacturers because you only find the device you're looking for. So I've got two here. First of all, I've got the IP utility from the Axis website. So go to axis.com, support and tools, and you can download the IP utility. And the other tool is the 2N network scanner. So again, go to the manufacturer's website, which is 2N.cz. And at the top, there's a search bar, just type in network scanner, and it brings it up. It brings you up the option for the Mac or for the, for the PC. So let's start with the Axis device first. So double click on the icon. There we go, it finds the device in question, double click on that, and it will take us to the login page. So as this is the first time set up, I need to create a password for it, so, and repeat that password. And then add user. Okay, so let's do some configuration. Let's go to system. And let's go to SIP. We're going to enable SIP and allow incoming SIP calls. And then save that. Then we'll go to SIP accounts. It's pure SIP. You've already got a default uh, input here. And at the end there, where you've got these three dots, you can click on that and edit. And then scroll down to DTMF. Click on the down button. Scroll down and add a DTMF sequence. The an, a door intercom is a device out the, of the door. You speak to somebody. In this case, you can see them and have a conversation with them. And then you can let them in. And to do that, you send a DTMF tone. Now, in 2N devices, that DTMF tone is factory set as 00, zero star. And we, we want to use that button that's on the panel, on the door, on the handset, sorry, um, right, because there's no keypad. So we have to use that as a sequence. So the sequence is 00, zero star. You can change that later on if you like. Um, description, let's call that lock. and save that. So that's that DTMF sequence saved. And in, as regards to settings, that's most of the things. All we have to do is go to events and add a rule. This rule will be unlock. Wait, but this is constant. You can change the time profile when you can release a lock. Let's um, set a condition. We've already said it's going to be a DTMF, uh, a dial tone. The DTMF event, well, we've already programmed it, lock open, so we can leave that is. And select an action. And the action will be an input output. So let's scroll down. Toggle IO once, toggle the input output once, so it, it flicks over for a time period. The port, so which output is it going to be? Uh, relay 1 
effective and how long is that relay going to stay open for? This factory there for uh, one second, which isn't enough. Let's say five and save that. So now we've created an event. And so when the, when the lock button is pressed on the intercom panel, it's going to unlock the door. So that's most of it done now. All we have to do is tell the intercom who's it going to call. So let's add a contact and we'll call it Compact. That's the address of the indoor compact. Well, if we go back to our desktop and this time we click on the net the 2M, you can see the um, the address of the compact. I've got two devices here. I've got the indoor touch and the compact. We're looking at the compact and its address is 192.168.1.105. So that's the address I'm going to use. One nine two one six eight one It's a peer to peer, always available, and save that. So now when the call's made, it will be um, it will be to the indoor compact. All we have to do then is tell the system how to behave. So in the menu there, you've got one there for call button. If you slide the menu bar, call button. We're going to enable the call button. In this instance, we're going to turn VMS off. We're not calling to a video management suite. We're not calling to an app or anything. In this case, it's just clear simply from the door to the handset. And what we can do then is further down here, recipients, you can have up to six devices called at once. So let's select indoor compact, new recipients added, and simply that's it. That's the system set up and um, tested now. So what I can do is go to, um, where is it? This one here, configuration check. Now, in the on, on the right hand side of this window, I put a separate um, screen up of me calling the door station physically and the handset ringing, me answering it, releasing the lock. And then in the intercom, you'll see the green light come on, and that would indicate that it's working and the lock's released. Remotely, I can test it. Now, I'm not next to it at the moment, it's quite a distance away, but I can hear it in the background. So what you can do here is remote test it. Is it going to work? So let's give it a test. In the background, I can hear it ringing, so I'm, I'm happy that's working. So that's the access part of the system set up. What we can do is go to the 2M device and do a little bit of work on that as well. Now, I've already set the 2M device up, so you just have to bear with me as regards to this. So with, with the, net, the 2M network scanner, you simply double click and it will take you to the 2M indoor compact start page. If it's a new installation, it's admin, and then your password is 2M. You type in 2M and it prompts you to change it to a secure password. But as I say, I've already set this one up, so we're okay. First of all, I already, I already use this one. This is my test device. I use it for, as you can see, for a 2M force. I'm going to add the access device to this. So what that allows you to do is on the screen for the indoor compact, you can go to the, the telephone directory in the indoor compact and view the door station you want to look at. Now, you don't necessarily need to do that, but why not? It's an option you're allowed to do. So let's um, add, create a new device. The device name, we'll call it Access. It's a display icon. What type of device is it? If you scroll to the bottom there, it's an Access door station. What's this phone number? As as a sh as we just when we added someone to the system, the phone number is the, the IP address. So you type in SIP colon 192.168.1.244. That is the address of the access device. You can see at the top there. That's the address of the device. 
So, and that's its sick phone number. Yeah, but can we switch him? Why not? And simply at the bottom there, save. And that's now saved into the um, intercom panel, into the handset. So you can, if you want to recall, see the camera without, answer, um, without anyone calling, you can simply just go to the directory and click on axis and it'll bring the camera up. It'll use it as a, you can use it as a, a spot monitor to see who, if somebody's come into the door, somebody's parking in the parking space, you can, you can view them. Another thing to do is go to the purple menu tools. In the unlocking menu, as, as I mentioned before, 00 is default code. If you want to change that, that's the way you do it. You change it to 00, zero to whatever you like. Another option is hang up call after unlocking. So to save energy, um, once you've released and let somebody in, you can switch the monitor off. Sometimes that monitor can stay on for a minute, three minutes, depends on what, what, what it's set at. If you simply switch it off once you've let them in, it will save you a bit, little bit of energy. So if you make any changes, click save. Um, I'll leave it as switch, switch off and save. And there we go, that's the system set up. Installers rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service. Any project size from a single device or to a complex system. Any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and projects teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.